Welcome to the second part of lecture five. In this part, we will introduce the geometric random variable. So, what is it? A geometric random variable y with parameter p. Usually, we denote this by g o g e o with parameter p. It can take on values of one, two, three, and so on and so forth. And then it has the following distribution. The chance that the variable y has the value equal to r will be equal to p times one minus p to the power r minus one. So intuitively, a geometric random variable corresponds to repeating a certain experiment until it succeeds. Each time, the experiment will succeed with probability p, and the va value of the random variable is is used to count the number of experiments we have performed, the number of trials we have made. So, if we can uh, perform the experiment so that it is successful in the first trial, then the value of y will be equal to one, and then we can see that the chance of this happening is equal to p. Yeah, because yeah, we have p chance to to get a success immediately. On the other hand. If uh, the the value of y is equal to two, it means that the total number of experiments conducted is two, which means that we must be failing for the first time, and then getting a successful event for the for the second time. So the chance of failing for the first time is one minus p, and then the chance of uh, successful in the in the second trial is equal to p. So the chance that we have y is equal to two will be exactly one minus p multiplied by p. And in general, to get the value of y to be equal to r, which means that we have to fail for the first r minus one times, and then get a success event in the rth trial. So the chance of this happening is one minus p to the power r minus one multiplied by p. For geometric random variable, there is a very interesting property called memoryless property. So here it is,、uh, what it is about. So suppose that we are doing this experiment for G O P, and then suppose that we have now already failed k times. Very very sad. We are failing it k times. And then we now ask at this moment, what is the chance that we still need exactly n more trials to get the first success? So we have already failed k times. Okay, but then. At this moment, we ask this question: What is the chance that we still need exactly n trials? Now, the chance of needing exactly n trials it means that we are going to fail for the first n minus one trial starting from now, and then get a successful event on the nth trial starting from now. So the chance of this happening is exactly one minus p to the power n minus one. For failing the first n n minus one times, multiplied by p for getting the successful event in the nth trial. Now, noticing that this is a term that depends on n only, it does not depend on k. So that means what? That means that although we have already failed k times, it seems that we have for we have forgotten this has happened. So what was happening in the past? Is in the past. It's not going to affect anything that is in the future. So that's why we call this memoryless because we don't have memory of the previous failure. So if we write down this interesting result as a theorem, we can do so as in the following page. So it is kind of messy to read, but then, but then we can interpret this、uh, term、uh, one by one easily. So first of all, suppose that y is the geometric random variable with parameter p. So what is the chance that, given y is greater than k, so y is greater than k, it means that y cannot be one, y cannot be two, y cannot be three, and so on and so forth, up to y cannot be k. What does that mean? It means that we have already failed k times. So given that we have already failed k times, 
what is the chance that y is equal to n plus k? So y counts the total number of, of trials. So we have already failed exactly k times now. So y is equal to n plus k means that what is the chance that we still need exactly n more trials to get the first success after failing k times? So this is the chance that we, we were asking uh, first in the previous slide. And then we have shown that this probability is the same as the probability of y is equal to n. It is just like we are going to start from now forgetting everything in the past and ask what is the chance of getting exactly n trials starting from now. When we are doing this from scratch, so this is the probability of y is equal to n. So this claim is exactly what we have discussed in the previous slide. Okay, so now we have introduced the geometric random variable. So let us find what is the expectation of this geometric random variable. So we claim that for, for geometric random variable with parameter p, its expected value is equal to 1 over p. So we are going to show this with three different proofs. The first proof is like this, okay. We are going to show this by definition, okay. So what is expected value of y? Okay, by definition, the expected value of a random variable is the summation of all the possible values that this random variable can take on, weighted by the chance that the random variable is equal to this value. So it is summation of R multiplied by probability of Y is equal to R. And now, because this is a geometric random variable, we have full information about this probability. So I will just replace this by what we have known. This is the definition. Now, if we look at this, this is the summation of RP multiplied by 1 minus p to the power r minus 1. So we, we see that this term p is independent of r. So we can move this p outside so that we leave everything inside. So if you recall this one, this is equal to what? So when r is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth, the first term is 1 times 1 minus p to the power 0, so it's 1. The second term is the second term is when r is equal to 2, it is going to be 2 times 1 minus p. And then the next term is going to be 3 times 1 minus p square. And then the next term is equal to 4 times 1 minus p cubed. And in fact, this is the infinite sum we have, we have seen before. This is of the second formula, the form of the second formula that we have seen before. So using the second formula, so we see that this summation term can be simplified into 1 minus bracket of 1 minus 1 minus p, this term, square. Okay, you can compare this term with the second formula and see that we can make it like this. Now notice that 1 minus bracket of 1 minus p is equal to p. So this term is 1 over p square. So when 1 over p square is multiplied by p, then we get 1 over p. So, so this is the first proof. Now for the second proof, we will rely on a special result for expected value of x. So let me introduce this result first. So I will call this a special formula for expected of x. It is because it is not generally true. We need x to be very special in order to have this special formula to be correct. So let's see. What is x? x here is a random variable, but then we need to restrict it. So this x has to be special. It can only take on non-negative integral values as its value. Okay, so geometric random variable is okay because it takes on values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's okay. Binomial random variable is also okay because it takes on value of 0, 1, 2, 3 up to n. But it is not the case for any general random variable. Now for this type of special random variable x, then we can find the expected value of x using an alternative way. 
So we claim that this is equal to the probability of x greater than or equal to 1. So notice that this term is greater than or equal to, not equal, okay, plus the probability of x greater than or equal to 2, plus the probability of x greater than or equal to 3, and so on and so forth. And why is it true? So it is best seen by using the following figure. Okay, so let me use a pale blue rectangle to represent the value of probability of x is equal to 1, a pale green rectangle to represent the probability of x is equal to 2, a pink one to represent the probability of x is equal to 3, an orange one to represent the probability of x is equal to 4. So originally, expected value of x is equal to what? Is equal to 0 times the probability of x is equal to 0, okay, so this is 0, plus 1 times probability of x is equal to 1, so 1 copy of this blue rectangle, plus 2 copies of the green rectangle, plus 3 copies of the pink rectangle, plus 4 copies of the orange rectangle, and so on and so forth. So if we sum up all these rectangles, then this will be the expected value of x. So here, to get the expected value of x, we are actually summing things column by column. The first column is 1 times probability of x is equal to 1. The second column is 2 times probability of x is equal to 2, and so on and so forth. But let's switch our angle a little bit. This time, suppose that we are summing things row by row. So what is the first row? The first row will have one copy of each colored rectangle. So in, so in short, we are adding all the possible cases, right? So it is actually the probability of x greater than or equal to 1. And the second row, it is the probability of x greater than or equal to 2. Third row, probability of x is greater than or equal to 3, and so on and so forth. So we see that by summing the the, the rectangles row by row, we will get the formula on the right hand side. So in that case, we get the proof for this special formula. Okay, now once the special formula is known, then we can get an alternative proof for the expectation of geometric random variable. So expected of y is equal to the probability of y greater than or equal to 1, plus probability of y greater than or equal to 2, plus probability of y greater than or equal to 3, and so on and so forth. Now the first probability, y greater than or equal to 1, it is simply 1. It is because any geometric random variable value will be greater than or equal to 1, so it is 1. Now how about this one? Probability of y greater than or equal to 2. So in order to get y greater than or equal to 2, what we need is we must fail for the first time. If we fail for the first time, then no matter what happens after that, then it is going to have total number of trials bigger than or equal to 2. So the chance for the second probability is 1 minus p. And similarly, in order to get y greater than or equal to 3, we must have the first two trials to fail. And then this chance is 1 minus p squared. So in that sense, expected value of y is equal to 1 plus 1 minus p plus 1 minus p squared plus 1 minus p cubed and so on and so forth. So using our infinite sum formula, the first formula, we get this is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus the bracket of 1 minus p. So after simplification, it is 1 over p. So we get another proof. Okay, finally, let's have the third proof. This time our proof is by conditional expectation formula. So how do you, how, how do we, how do we, how do we do this? Okay, so expected value of y can be expressed as, so we, we look at what? So whenever we use the conditional expectation formula, we need to somehow think of a certain partition of the sample space. So we are partitioning the sample space based on what happens in the first trial. So the first trial can be successful 
or the first child can be failing. So expected value of y is equal to expected value of y given the first child succeeds weighted by the probability that the first child succeeds plus expected value of y given the first child fails weighted by the probability of the first child fails. Now some of the terms are easy to, to see. Okay, so for instance, what is the expected value of y given the first child succeeds? It's easy. If I know that the first child succeeds, then the total number of trials that we need is 1. So this expected value is always 1 if we are now given that the first child succeeds. And the corresponding probability is p. So we now know this. This term, we do not know. We will need to compute this soon. So I will just put it here. And then this probability, the probability that the first child fails is 1 minus p. So, so far, we have this one. So this is a term that we do not know. So let us see how to handle this one. So we want to find out what is the expected value of y given the first child fails. Now, knowing that the first child fails, the total number of child y will be equal to, you can express it as 1, this is at least 1, plus the remaining number of trials that we need to make. But on the other hand, the remaining number of trials is needed to get the first success, and by the memoryless property, we know that the number of remaining trials itself is also a geometric random variable with parameter p. Okay, so y is equal to 1 plus the number of remaining trials, but the latter term itself is a geometric random variable with parameter p. Okay, so this is important. And next, let us continue. So to find the expected value of y given the first child fails, this time we use the linearity of conditional expectation. Express y as 1 plus the number of remaining trials. So we get this one is equal to 1 plus expected of number of remaining trials given that the first child fails. Now this is about the first child. This is about the remaining trial. So they are independent of each other, memoryless property. So, so that's, that's why we can further simplify the equation into 1 plus expected value of the number of remaining trials. So here, this is expected value of a geometric random variable with parameter p. So it will be the same as expected of y, because y itself is also a geometric random variable with parameter p. That's very nice. So originally, we know nothing about this expected value. But now we can express this as 1 plus expected of y. So let's see what is the result. Oh, the result will be. So let me copy. This is what we have stopped before. The result will be now we are replacing this expected value of y given the first charge fail by 1 plus expected value of y. Now we now have one equation, the first part equals to the last part, one equation with one unknown. So by solving this, then we will find out that expected value of y is equal to 1 over p. So we now have a third proof for the expectation of geometric random variable with parameter p. So that's all for part two.